Prima Media in Johannesburg, this is The Real Economy Report. The United Nations is encouraging more South African businesses to tender first contracts. Keith Campbell reports. The United Nations and its specialist agencies and programs are major global consumers of goods and services. UN Field Procurement Service Procurement Division Chief Sean Purcell explains the scale of UN procurement and how South African companies can get a share of the business. The United Nations uh, in 2014 spent $17.2 billion on procurement. Um, that covers all of the 79 different UN entities that are doing procurement. For South Africa, the amount of contracts that were won by South African companies was $170 million approximately. That was in 2014. However, in 2013, the figure was approximately $190 million. So therefore, it was a decline of 12.5% on the previous year. The way that the South African companies can access is actually by registering with the United Nations on the United Nations Global Marketplace website. Because on that website, once they register, they are registering with 26 different UN entities. And they will be recognized once they do the registration on the goods and services that they provide. And therefore, if the UN entities are looking for those goods and services, they will make contact with those various UN or with South African uh, companies. Because there are 79 different UN entities, I can say the United Nations is looking for everything. Uh, from a peacekeeping perspective, we, we need uh, vehicles, we need engineering equipment, we need engineering services, we need um, aircraft, we need, uh, but UNICEF, where they will need special items as will World Food Programme, who need quite a lot of food items. But it depends on the UN entity, and that's where the business themselves have to identify which of the UN entities that they want to do work with. And they'll find out all that information on the website, the United Nations Global website, Global Marketplace website, where there is a booklet on there which deals with the annual statistics review. And that outlines every contract over $30,000 which the UN has put in place and who they've actually put it in place with and what the commodity was for. The United Nations, there's four principles uh, that for procurement with most UN entities and one of them is effective international competition. So that for the Secretariat, which I belong to, anything over $40,000 we have to advertise internationally. So we do that on our website procurement division website and also on the UN Global Marketplace website. So we go out there, we tell companies what we plan to buy in an expression of interest and then three or four months later we will follow that up with a tender. If companies are interested, even though they're not registered, they can actually respond to the expression of interest and then they go through the registration process which takes about 20 minutes. It's all online and it's all free. Other news making headlines this week. Vodacom rebounds from tough year and AMSA adds 4.5 billion rand rights issue to survival plan. Telecommunications group Vodacom posted a strong start to the 2016 financial year as the South African operations recovered and the international operations continued its solid performance. At group level, revenue was up 6.4% in the first six months to almost 40 billion rand. Data revenue was just above 10 billion rand and up 33.5% on the prior year. Data now contributes 31.4% to group service revenue. Our first half EBITDA was up 13% to 14.7 billion rand due to pretty good commercial execution, optimizing our channel and subsidy investments as well as real delivery on our cost saving programs. Operating free cash flow was really pleasing up 30.7% to 5.8 billion rand. Our headline earnings per share up 6% to 440 cents per share and the board is resolved to increase the dividend by 5.3% to 395 cents per share. ArcelorMittal South Africa announced a 4.5 billion rand rights issue as part of a multi-pronged survival package which hinges on greater protection from the battle domestic steel industry. The first is let's look at the package of solutions. Government has been significantly supportive of the efforts 
and are working as fast as their processes allow them. The first appeal to government was to make sure that we have a fair playing field and we have trade protection for our industry. Uh, we put in 11 applications to increase the custom duty from 0 to 10% and that caters for all the products produced in this country. The first was awarded to us a couple of months ago for our colour and galve products. The wire rod and rebar decision is imminent and the Everest high felt uh, decision around angles is, is imminent. That's Creamer Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.